Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Brandenburg for EU4 1.32 Origins. So Brandenburg is a nation located in northern Germany in the HRE. We do also start off as an elector and even though we're not a very rich and powerful nation, our amazing national ideas and mission tree enable us to become the most popular nation to form the nation of Prussia with, one of the most powerful formables in the game with excellent militarily focused national ideas. By following this Brandenburg into Prussia guide you will become the dominant power in northern Germany in the HRE and then in Europe and maybe even the world by forming Germany later on. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides or more EU4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Brandenburg. So first off, we're going to go into our estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the clergy religious state, clerical advisory council, and religious diplomats. We're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic councillors. And we're gonna give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and commercial advisory board. Don't take burger loans. Then we're gonna activate the encouraged development state edict in the state of Neumark right here, and dev the province of Sternberg up once with Diplo. Then we're gonna go back into our estates, sell titles and seize land. Now we're gonna take our army and destroy these two cavalry regiments. They're too expensive. And we're also gonna build one more infantry regiment and hire the free company as well. You can give both your ruler and air military command since they suck. Now we're gonna hire one advisor, a diplo rep or improve relations guy. I don't have either of those so I'm not gonna be hiring them. Now it's time for some alliances. The most important nations to ally are Austria and Poland along with one elector. Preferably Saxony, but if you can't get Saxony, ally someone like Köln, Trier, Mainz or the Palatinate. So another elector. And we're gonna start off by allying Austria. They will always be available. And sometimes you can ally Poland right off the bat, but if you can't, first you can royal marry them and then you will be able to ally them. If you still can't, you will be able to after improving with them for a month or two. We're also not gonna be setting any rivals just yet. Now it's time to wait for about a month or two for everyone to get alliances and for us to be able to ally Poland. Now that a month or two have passed and we have allied everyone we need, Austria, Poland and preferably Saxony or another elector, you can start currying favors with Poland. Now here's where the time critical part of the guide starts. As you all know, the Teutonic Order will sell us the provinces of Neumark and Dramberg. After we get those, we need to declare on Wolgast right here and get at least the province of Stolp so we can border the Teutonic Order. Here's why this is time critical. As you know, Poland has a truce with the Teutons until December 1449. What we need to do is get these provinces from the Teutons from the event and then fight Wolgast and get Stolp all before Poland's truce with the Teutons runs out. So if the Teutons don't sell you the provinces fast enough and you don't beat up Wolgast fast enough, Poland will declare on the Teutons without you and take the provinces we need. What we need to do is declare on the Teutons by calling in Poland and us controlling the war instead of them. So if you don't get these two fast enough, and if you don't beat up Wolgast fast enough, you're better off restarting since it's only gonna be four years into the game max. But while we're waiting for the Teutons to sell us this and for us to fight Wolgast, we are gonna pop off one more. During this point, you're gonna check all your rivals right here and see whichever one of them is the weakest and the easiest to fight. At this point, you can also take the mission Imperial Ambition, which gives us a diplomat prestige and improved relations. You should take that. And with these extra diplomats, with one, we're gonna start spying on the Teutons, and with the other, we're gonna start improving relations with our allies as soon as we declare a war. In my case, I've noticed that Lüneburg here is the weakest nation that I can rival. They're only allied to Anhalt, so I am gonna rival Lüneburg right here, wait for a month so we can get the CB, and declare a humiliation war on them. Like I said, fight whichever nation is the easiest to humiliate. When this war starts, you can hire a morale, discipline, or fort defense guy. If you don't have any of those, don't hire anyone. I do have a morale guy, so I am gonna get him. And of course, when you finish your first easy war, if you happen to be fighting two rivals, you can humiliate the second one, which is not the primary belligerent. In my case, that's not happening, so I'm just gonna take war reps and money from Anhalt but you can humiliate a secondary rival. And the primary nation you're fighting, you are gonna show strength on them to get 100 of each monarch point. And that's our first war done. By this point, you may have gotten Neumark and Dramberg, in which case you can get ready to declare on Wolgast. If not, you're gonna be waiting. 
At this point, you may also want to check if Wolgast has gotten a strong ally that will make the war versus them slow. A strong nation that Wolgast can ally is Bohemia and Burgundy, so if they've allied some of them, you're better off restarting. Now, the reason we're not using the PU Bohemia strategy where we Royal Mary Bohemia right at the start in the hopes of getting a Hohenzoller on their throne and then simply claiming their throne and declaring a war is because of the changes to aggressive expansion in 1.32. Sure, we could PU Bohemia right at the start, just like in previous patches with those strategies, but as soon as you take one more province from Wolgas, for example, you're gonna get a massive coalition consisting of the entire HRE, which is gonna slow us down massively and prevent us from getting the province that we want and forming Prussia in the time that we want. So yeah, you could still PU Bohemia, you're just not gonna be doing this as fast as now. So that's why I don't recommend it. And this is the event right here, the fate of Neumark, where we need to make the Grand Master a generous offer and gain the provinces of Neumark and Dramberg for ourselves. Of course, we are gonna pick this, boom, excellent, and we gain those two provinces. Now once you get those two provinces, you will be immediately able to unlock the mission Reclaim Neumark which will give you perma claims on these provinces right here. And as soon as this happens, you are of course immediately gonna be declaring war on Wolgast to take the province of Stolp. Like I said, if they have a strong ally like Bohemia or Burgundy, this may not work out for you, since the war might take longer than December 1449, when Poland's truce with the Teutons runs out. And now that the CB showed up, I can declare on them with the conquest of Stolp right here. Boom, there we go. I'm already actually currying favors with Saxony, and I'll be able to call them in mid-war some time to help me speed up this war since I have to fight Frankfurt, although you don't really need any allies in this war. And once you beat up Wolgast in this war, you should full annex them. In the previous strategy, we only took stop from them and vassalized the rest of them, but now, because we haven't conquered anything else, we can totally full annex Wolgast. You don't have to occupy this province here, they will have naval superiority, it's totally fine, and of course, you are gonna take all their money. And boom, our first conquest war is done. But now that you've done this, you're gonna put your troops right on the border here with Danzig and get ready to declare on the Teutons. Of course, when you do this, you will be able to take two missions, a show of strength, which gives us permaclaims in these areas right here, and Pomeranian succession, which gives us permaclaims on these areas right here. I did forget to mention that you should have rivaled Wolgast right before you declare on them. I forgot to do that, so that's a little mistake on my part. But yes, make sure to rival Wolgast right before declaring on them, and of course you should rival the Teutons too if you can, I can't in my case. And as soon as December 1st 1449 rolls around, you will be declaring on the Teutons. Before this war, make sure to set Danzig and Konigsberg as provinces of vital interest, it's fine if the other ones are yellow, and we'll simply be declaring on them. Here, you will want to move your 4k stack to Danzig and your 8k stack to Konigsberg. You have to occupy these two provinces. Even though they're provinces of interest, Poland still might not give them to you. So just move the 4k here and the 8k here. It's fine if Poland occupies occupies everything else. And if you haven't gathered up favors with Poland by now, you can call them in with the promise of land. And you should actually give them land. You should give them Kolm if you call them in with the promise of land. But if you just call them in with favors regularly, then it's fine, you don't have to do anything. And we're simply gonna declare for the conquest of Danzig right here. It is paramount that Poland joins this war. They have to join it. And just like this, 4k right here, 8k right here, and let Poland do the rest. Poland may or may not have Lithuania by now, it really doesn't matter if they got them or a local noble. And once you beat up the Teutons in this very easy war, the only thing you're gonna take from them is the province of Danzig and the province of Konigsberg, and give Kolm to Poland if you call them in with the promise of land, and that's it. No money, no war reps, no other provinces, just Danzig and Konigsberg. And boom, that's our first war with the Teutons done. Now, aggressive expansion is a little bit high because we fought two nations in rapid succession, so our choose with the Teutons should be about eight years. After about four pass, we're gonna be declaring on some of these guys right here. Now it's time to chill for, like I said, four years. During this point, you can tell two diplomats to improve relations with outraged countries and one with allies. For your second age ability, you should of course take strength and noble privileges, although curtail noble privileges, it isn't that bad as Brandenburg, but still, we all know this one's better. And like I said, after around four years have passed since your war with the Teutons, it is time to fight some of these guys right here. Now if you're fighting Magdeburg, Lunaburg, or Verden, 
I do recommend vassalizing one of them since they have two provinces, but if you're fighting one of the one province guys, you can simply full annex them, or you could vassalize them as well, we're doing this mainly to save on admin points and aggressive expansion. But for sure vassalize the two province guys. The one province guys, it's up to you. I'm gonna be fighting Verdun right now in my case, since I do have a truce with Lüneburg, and if I fight Magdeburg, I'm still gonna have to fight the Teutons. So it is better to fight one of the two province guys. I am gonna call in Saxony in this war. For our first idea group as Brandenburg, I recommend opening up with quality ideas. After this, you're gonna set focus to mill. And as soon as you beat up any of these guys, either vassalize them or full annex them, depending on what I said. By this point, your shoes with the Teutons should be up, and we'll be declaring our second war versus them. And like I said, we'll be declaring on the Teutons, you can call in Poland in this war as well, but it really doesn't matter. In my case, they're fighting Denmark at the same time, which isn't that nice. We may not be able to full occupy everything, but it's fine, no big deal. In fact, you should call in Poland, because you don't want them declaring their separate war versus the Teutons. We don't care too much about Kolm once again, so set your armies up something like this. I got two stacks right here, one of them is gonna go to Tuchel, the other one is gonna go to Berienburg, and we got three guys right here, three stacks, one is gonna go to Memel, one right here and one right here. This one's already occupied and I don't care if Poland gets this one. And I am gonna declare for Marienburg in the second war. And we'll just do a little something like this. Now in my case my ruler just died and I guess I got Ansbach and their junior partner Bayreuth as junior partners as well. Now these are very weak nations and we don't want to waste diplo slots on two nations which are one province miners which we're gonna integrate all the way in 50 years. So even though we just got them as junior partners we will be able to take the mission the Ansbach succession which is pretty good. We gain some more perma claims down here. I do recommend getting rid of these guys. Sure you could feed them provinces down here to also open up another route of expansion but I still don't think it's worth it having such small nations as junior partners. Remember, they're not vassals. But we're not gonna be getting rid of them the classic way by abandoning the personal union. Instead, we're gonna be waiting for an event which lets them break free from us and we gain some nice permanent modifiers until the end of the game. I think the event is called Desposito Achillea or something like that. Basically, get rid of this guy is what the event is trying to say. And you can also get that event by losing the Hohenzollern dynasty. So we're not gonna be getting rid of these guys. We're just gonna be waiting for that event. In your case, you may never get them at all, in which case it doesn't really matter. And of course once you've beaten up the Teutons for the second time, hopefully you've occupied all of these provinces right here, we are gonna be full annexing them this second time. You can give Kulm to Poland if you want, it really is up to you, it doesn't matter too much, I am gonna give it to Poland, and there we go, we have everything we need. After this point, your alliance with Poland and Lithuania doesn't matter anymore. But first, we're gonna expand a little more in the HRE before turning our back on them. Either way, once you do beat up the Teutons, you will be able to take the mission Prussian Expansion, which gives us permaclaims on Silesia and Lusatia over here. So we're gonna have to fight Bohemia. At this point, you may also wanna find another strong nation which you can ally, usually it's Denmark, and let's see in my case, I actually can ally Denmark and even England. So Denmark is not a bad ally to have since they'll help you fight Poland and Lithuania. I am gonna ally them. At this point, we are over relations limit, especially if you've gotten these two guys. But if you haven't gotten them, yours is gonna be one over due to your subject, if you've even gotten them. Now it's time to chill for a little bit more because some nations are pretty angry and then we'll continue our expansion elsewhere. At this point, since we're not making a whole lot from trade either and our merchants are in Vienna and Krakow, I recommend moving them to collect in Lübeck and Saxony and once they're there, telling them to establish communities to improve relations faster and lower aggressive expansion faster. And this is that event that I was talking about, Dispositio Achillea. Brandenburg must be indivisible where we get minus 10% stab cost and plus 25% chance of a new heir until the end of the game, but we also lose Ansbach and Bayreuth. This is something we actually do want to happen or we just lose stab prestige and we actually get to keep those guys. Of course, we're gonna take this option right here. And just like that, we got some nice modifiers until the end of the game and 
we no longer have to worry about these guys right here. The claims that we got from them, however, in this area are permanent, which is awesome. We could even expand here if we wanted to. After a bit of time has passed and you're no longer worried about aggressive expansion, it is time to declare another war, preferably versus these guys right here. Once again, if it's a two province guy, vassalize them. I'm gonna be declaring on Magdeburg, super rich nation, super powerful province here in Magdeburg, level 2 center of trade, it produces cloth, very nice province, high dev too. So I am gonna be declaring on Magdeburg, for the conquest of Magdeburg, and there we go. Fight whichever one of these nations that you have claims on looks the weakest or the easiest to fight. It really is up to you. You could even finish off Stettin here if they still exist, or maybe you could even fight Bohemia. Although, I don't recommend this for now, since a lot of people will get angry. Of course, once you've beaten up whoever you're fighting, annex them if they're a one province guy, and vassalize them if they're a two province guy. I'm gonna vassalize Magdeburg right here, and take all their money. Now it's once again time to chill for a little bit before continuing our conquests in the same areas. For your first stage ability, you should of course take Justified Wars. When a little more time has passed and aggressive expansion is looking manageable again, it's time to continue your conquest. Once again, I do recommend fighting these guys up here and not getting involved in Bohemia yet. Or maybe you could even get these guys down here if you happen to have claims on them from Ansbach and Bayreuth but you're most likely gonna be expanding up here. In my case, I'm gonna declare on Stettin right here because their ally Burgundy won't join, so this is a perfect opportunity. At this point, I actually am gonna break my alliance with Poland because I'd rather be allied to Austria, and Austria wants to break their alliance with me because I'm allied to Poland. Like I said, you don't need Poland anymore after you've full annexed the Teutons. For your tier 3 government reform, you should take centralized bureaucracy. And once you beat up some of these guys right here, if you already have two vassals, you're gonna be full annexing them. If you don't have two vassals, you can get another one if they have two provinces. I am gonna be full annexing Stettin. And that's that war done. For your second idea group as Brandenburg, I recommend taking economic ideas. By the way, I'm not fighting Bohemia, this is just a war Austria dragged me in. When you're done chilling for a bit, feel free to continue your conquest still in the same areas that we're fighting. I'm gonna declare on Lunenburg right now. Of course, when you beat up whoever you're fighting here, after you get your first two vassals, where we needed to lower aggressive expansion and save admin points, there's no more need to vassalize any other guys, so you can just full annex whoever you're fighting. Out of the small guys, of course, <laughs> don't full annex Bohemia. At this point, I'm also gonna declare on Saxe Lauenburg. We're fighting whoever is the weakest. And like I said earlier, even if you have or haven't broken your alliance with Poland and Lithuania, at this point it doesn't matter too much. You can use Denmark and Austria to beat up Poland and Lithuania. You can use Poland and Denmark to beat up Austria. You can use Austria and Poland to beat up Denmark. Basically, out of these three big nations right here, you're gonna be using two to take out one, and then the other to take out the other, and so on until you're the most powerful one. If you don't want to expand into Poland, that's fine. Keep your alliance with them and use them to help you versus Denmark or versus Austria or versus Bohemia or something like that. If you do want to expand here, use Denmark and Austria. It pretty much is up to you. I am gonna expand into Poland, so that's why my alliance with them broke. I don't wanna keep it around anyway, so I'm gonna use Austria and Denmark versus them. Once I gain a big enough power base over here, then I'm probably gonna turn on Denmark and then finally on Austria. And of course, I'm also gonna be full annexing Saxe Lauenburg as well. And by around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as Brandenburg with the time critical things we needed to do at the beginning. That's pretty much the most difficult part in playing Brandenburg, getting Wolgast and then getting the Teutons without Poland getting involved and taking provinces from them. We start off by declaring a humiliation slash show strength war. If we had time, of course, waited for the event, the first time critical thing where we needed to get it in like two or three years so we can declare on Wolgast in time. And then if you got that event in time, you declared on Wolgast, full annex them, then we fought the Teutons for these two provinces, fought them later again to get the rest of them, giving this one to Poland if you wanted to, if not, it's up to you really, there's no need to give it to them, you can if you want to, and then we chilled a bit because of those rapid wars, we got a lot of aggressive expansion and we needed to chill, and then continued our conquests in this direction over here. Like I said, you should have vassalized one or two of the big guys, like Lunenburg, Magdeburg or Verden, and conquered the rest of the one province guys, of course it's not very easy to conquer all 
all of these guys. Lots of the guys we have claims on are free cities like Goslar, Hamburg, and Bremen, but you can get around that by becoming the Emperor, revoking the free city status, fighting their allies and annexing them even though you didn't co-belligerent them. Of course, that will generate a lot of aggressive expansion, but it is a way to get around it. And by now, we're the dominant nation in Northern Germany. After this point, if you have any subjects, you can start annexing them. You don't need their help anymore and you can gobble up all those sweet, sweet lands for yourself. You may still have your alliance with Poland if you want to keep them to fight Austria, like I said, along with Denmark. Keep Denmark and Austria to fight Poland, Austria and Poland to fight Denmark. The choice is really up to you. I'm going to fight Poland for a bit, then I'm going to turn on Denmark, then I'm going to turn on Austria, and that's how I'm going to continue my conquests. After this point, you will continue to expand in these same areas up here, cleaning up northern Germany, gaining dominant control of the Baltic, Lubeck and those trade nodes up here, even Saxony too, and then you're gonna continue to expand down south. Maybe your goal is to reform Germany with historical borders or something like that. Maybe your goal is to blob out all over Europe. The choice is really up to you. If you got Ansbach and Bayreuth as junior partners and got rid of them through the event, you will have claims down here, in which case you can fight down here. Maybe vassalize some nation, like I said. You don't wanna keep these guys around for 50 years, so maybe vassalize someone down here and feed them all of these lands, annex them later once you connect them and stuff like that. That the choice is yours. You got lots more claims from your missions. A very nice mission tree, like I said. And after this point, once you continue expansion, you will eventually get to admin tech 10. You should have no problems keeping up with tech. In fact, I'm one of the most advanced nations in my situations right here. And of course, when the Protestant Reformation comes around, you will be flipping Protestant. That's the faith I recommend. I don't recommend going Hussite through Bohemia. I don't recommend Reformed. I do recommend Protestant. And after Protestant and have admin tech 10, you will take the decision to form Prussia and become one of the most powerful, militarily focused nations in the game. By this point, our economy is also doing great. We're making quite a bit of income. We have a nice army going. Sure, I do have loans personally. Most of them I've taken out to build stuff. As we can see right here during this point, you should have been building buildings. I've built quite a few marketplaces in the center of trade provinces. You should have done that as well. I've also built some workshops in high value trade good provinces, and I've built a couple of churches too. Why not? Those are mainly the buildings you want to focus on building right now. Of course, after you get access to the see you will want to build up a fleet mainly galleys to help you fight denmark maybe or trade ships to protect trade in the baltic and lubeck trade nodes so you're gonna want to have two trade fleets going and a main battle fleet with a couple of heavies and a couple of galleys of course that's not too important if you don't plan on fighting denmark but if you do you definitely should get them going either way get some trade fleets going you don't gotta get a battle fleet like i said for our first idea group we took quality ideas to buff up the quality of our army even more mesh very well with our national ideas as brand and as Prussia later. We already have 20% infantry combat ability, 10% cav, 10% artillery. It's awesome. This boat stuff maybe is not too helpful, but you'll definitely find it useful later, especially as Germany. Then we got economic to help us build up our economy, build buildings, lower inflation, and all that good stuff. That def cost discount is also awesome. For your third idea group, I recommend taking quantity ideas to buff up the size of your army. And for your fourth idea group, I recommend taking innovative, mainly because of the point stuff, the tech discount, the advisor stuff you're gonna get a lot of cheaper stuff with innovative sure a lot of people don't like it but there are awesome awesome policies with it as well like the trade efficiency with trade the siege ability and leader siege with offensive and the infantry combat ability with quality so quality economic quantity innovative after that i recommend taking offensive and after that trade and after that defensive or aristocratic and the final one is up to you pretty much quantity quality offensive defensive for prussian space marines insane combat ability insane morale insane discipline and even with the prussian national ideas you're gonna get that even higher with the militarization mechanic you're gonna get that even higher and your army will be unstoppable you're already the dominant army in europe listen you just don't have the size right now later you will have the size and the power and you will be able to crush any nation in Europe. For your tier 4 government reform, I recommend taking nobles of the robe or administrative clergy. For your tier 5 government reform, I recommend taking general estates and later when absolutism comes around, flip to royal decree. For your tier 6 government reform, I recommend taking l'etat And for your tier 7 government reform, I recommend taking political absolutism. And after this point, you're gonna continue to expand in all the same directions. You're gonna fight Bohemia, get these lands, fight over here, fight over here, conquer all of Germany, form Germany later on, of course, the decision is right here. You need to own quite 
quite a few provinces in the North and South Germany regions. Are German ideas better than Prussian ideas? Hmm, well, for playing tall, I would recommend Prussian ideas, but if you want to blob out hard and conquer all of Europe, maybe, then I do recommend actually taking the German ideas once you form Germany. They are super, super powerful, and Germany has an awesome, awesome mission tree as well. And like I said, Baron, the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. Sure, you could go more aggressive, conquer faster, you could even dismantle the HRE to lower aggressive expansion, but listen, if you're already more aggressive than this, if you're dismantling the HRE, do you really need a guide for Brandenburg? Probably not. So, play at your own pace, but you should come around to looking something like this in the 1490s. Pretty much the start as Brandenburg is the most difficult part. After that, it's easy sailing. If you're not that confident in your abilities, or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel, and you can continue playing on as Brandenburg from this date forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk live, and if you want to catch up on stuff from over there and watch playthroughs, you can subscribe to the second channel, link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you want to see more guides or more EU4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.